Hello everyone, welcome to Lukman IS. Today we are going to have the Hindu newspaper analysis dated 2nd of November 2023. In today's newspaper analysis, we are going to cover a mapping topic and then we are going to look into some important editorial articles. Then we also have selected some topics for the prelims point of view. So with this, let us start the discussion for the newspaper. So these are the list of articles that we are going to discuss in today's newspaper analysis. Along with the list of articles, we have also included the syllabus reference. I mean like from which part of the syllabus they are connected. And then the page number of the Hindu newspaper is listed. As like in the morning, we every day share the list of articles that you need to read. So these articles are from that, right? So with this, let us understand the first topic. It's a mapping topic. So we are going to understand about a region which is known as Southeast Asia. The Southeast Asia region remains in news, right? It remains in news, but like many of us are unclear about which countries are part of Southeast Asia, right? So this particular map showcases those countries that are part of Southeast Asia. So in general, I mean like, you know, the map may vary from one to another because like, you know, there is no clear, let's say like, you know, clear understanding about various, uh, like, you know, among various organizations related to which countries are part of Southeast Asia. So there are in all 11 countries that are part of Southeast Asia. These countries include Brunei. Brunei is a very small country. This is, this is the location of Brunei over here. Okay. So I'm going to showcase Brunei in, in another map also. It includes Brunei. It includes Cambodia. This is Cambodia, right? It includes East Timor or it is known as Timor Liste. So this is, uh, this country is, let's say like a kind of island nation. So it is located over here, okay, the yellow region over here that you see. So this is the more list. Then we have Indonesia, as we know, Indonesia is a, uh, I mean, like, you know, big country. This is Indonesia. So it is divided into, let's say, Sumatra, Java and all. Then we have Laos. Laos is over here. This is Laos, right? Then we have Malaysia. This is Malaysia. Okay, so as we all know, this is Malaysia. Malaysia is divided into two islands. One island is over here, second island is over here, right? Then we have Myanmar, Burma. So this is Myanmar. Myanmar remains in news because of many reasons. Like in 2021, Myanmar, uh, let's say its military has done a coup. Uh, like through that coup, they have, let's say, taken into custody the uh, like, you know, civilian leaders and they have established a military rule in Myanmar, okay? So still, a lot of tensions are going on inside Myanmar, Myanmar, that's the thing. And Philippines, Philippines is a country over here. So Philippines is divided into various small, small islands. We can see, like it was, like it has many islands as part of it. Then Singapore, Singapore is very, very small country, okay? Which is located over here. Very small country, Singapore. Right? So this is the location of Singapore, then Thailand and Vietnam, Thailand and Vietnam are over here, right? Thailand and Vietnam are over here. This is Vietnam. Okay. This, this region over here, this is the map of Vietnam. All right. And this is Thailand in the middle. Here we have Thailand. Okay. So these are the countries that are part of Southeast Asia. So let us quickly see these countries one by one. So I have included few more maps also to make it clear to you, right? So here, like, you know, in this map, they have mentioned Myanmar, Laos, Thailand, Cambodia, Vietnam, Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia. Okay. This is Brunei. Over here we have Brunei. This is Philippines. And this is, let's say, Timor Leste. is the more. So if we count the number of countries, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and this is 11. So these are the countries of Southeast Asia. Okay, these are countries of Southeast Asia. In your free time, you can go through this map. Although like in this map, they have mentioned about uh, India and China. So they are not part of Southeast Asia. Okay. They are not included in that grouping. Now with this, we have the first topic. We are going to discuss about this topic in detail. It says impacting a women's freedom to reproductive right uh, choices. Okay. So we are going to discuss about this topic. 
नेम ऑफ द टॉपिक इज impacting a women's freedom women's freedom to reproductive choices impacting a women's freedom to reproductive choices so we are going to understand about this topic right over here as we all know that recently the supreme court of india has given a judgment okay supreme court of india has given a judgment and this judgment is related to let's say like you know abortion this judgment is related to abortion there was a woman who was 26 weeks pregnant okay she was 26 weeks pregnant and she wanted to what she wanted to abort a child so initially i mean like you know during that time she was around 24 weeks pregnant so a case came before the supreme court of india and there were two judge bench okay there was a two judge bench and that two judge bench right had upheld her right that like you know has upheld that she can go for pregnancy she can go for pregnancy but later on the uh, like you know central government came central government approached the supreme court and uh, came with a report and that report was from a medical team of the all india institute of medical sciences and that all india uh, like you know that board of the aims right it said that like it had a viable what it had a viable fetus right the women has a viable fetus and viable fetus means uh, let's say unborn child that can survive even if he is taken out of the womb even if let's say he is taken out of the womb so it can survive right so it said that like you know it has a viable fetus like is uh, does the court still permits uh, the pregnancy to this women but the thing is in that case the two judge bench i mean like you know they had divided opinion one judge one of the judge both were women right women judges one of the judge justice hima kohli is one of the judges and justice nagaratna so justice nagaratna was in favor of let's say like you know abortion justice hima kohli let's say like was against it and then this matter was referred to a higher judge bench and that higher judge bench included the chief justice of india also okay it included the chief justice of india uh, dy chandrachud okay dy chandrachud so the that bench basically has given a ruling and in that ruling that bench has denied right that bench has denied uh, the right to abortion to that women so they say like you know we cannot like stop we cannot stop our viable fetus from breathing right inside or outside the womb right so they said this particular thing but the thing is like underlying this particular entire decision there exists something which is known as medical termination of pregnancy act okay medical termination of pregnancy act 1971 then there was an medical termination of pregnancy act which was amended right amended act 2021 this medical termination of pregnancy act the initial one it allowed pregnancy to be aborted up to 20 weeks time period but this particular act has increased the time period to 24 weeks right means like time period to 24 weeks but in that case also if the fetus goes beyond 20 weeks in that case there i mean like opinion of the medical practitioners are needed whether like you know the child has a danger to life or the women has a danger to life that's the thing so the thing is these are the cases i mean like you know these are the cases where the uh, courts finally take a decision but in this case the child has already reached 26 weeks the women has already reached let's say 26 weeks of pregnancy and supreme court of india has let's say upheld this particular act i mean like according uh, has gone by this act and supreme court of india has said that like we cannot let's say like you know stop the breath of a viable child okay this is the thing but in this article the author has talked about 
that in giving this judgment the supreme court of india has done some error there there exists some error in the judgments okay there exists some errors what are the errors that exist in the judgment so author said right that if it go by the constitution of india right if we go by the constitution of india the constitution of india recognizes article 14 and article 21 these are fundamental rights article 20 uh, article 14 and 21 are fundamental rights right they are fundamental rights this article 14 is known as right to equality this is right to equality and if we talk about article 21 it talks about right to life and personal liberty okay right to life and personal liberty personal liberty so related to this right to life and personal liberty as well right i mean like there was a case that was decided by the supreme court of india and it is a very famous case that is known as justice putta swami case okay justice putta swami case putta swami case so in this case a nine judge bench of the supreme court of india okay a nine judge bench of the supreme court of india has taken a decision a nine judge bench of the supreme court of india has decision taken a decision and in that decision they have held that the right to privacy implicit in article 21 of the constitution it says right to privacy implicit in article 21 of the constitution enabled individuals to exercise autonomy over their body and mind and allowed women complete freedom to make reproductive choices okay so this particular judgment justice putta swami judgment is in favor of complete autonomy complete body, bodily autonomy to individuals so if it is in favor of that so this particular women should have been awarded a, a kind of let's say like you know uh, awarded a decree where like you know supreme court may have allowed the uh, let's say like you know abortion to happen so in this article the author says that like you know this particular judgment has two errors what are those errors one of the judge one of the error that the author says that does uh, like the first error stems from post failure to ask whether what ought to seen as a central question to resolving the dispute i mean like what was the central question is like does a fetus enjoy an autonomous moral status second does it have legal standing is it capable of exercising constitutional rights okay means like these questions have not been answered means like the supreme court of india has not answered the questions related to the fetus okay questions related to the viable fetus i mean like does it have a like you know does it have a moral right or does it have a right to represent itself right means like does it have the authority to authority or right to represent itself so there are many such questions that have not been answered so this is one of the error in the judgment second error says that the court fails to examine whether the mtp act is merely an enabling legislation does the statute facilitate the exercise of a fundamental right okay means now the question is related to medical termination of pregnancy act okay mtp act which is amended act of 2021 so it says that the, whether this act is merely an enabling legislation beyond which the judiciary can take decision or like it is a kind of binding legislation that within the boundary of which the judiciary has to take a decision that's the thing okay so these are the two errors that the author has talked about in this article so finally the author says that the judgment in x versus union of india in this case the women let's say who has sought termination of pregnancy right so that is x versus union of india right which falls short of bestowing any explicit rights to the unborn suffers from errors that's the thing okay so this is a case this is a case that pertains to the right of life of the fetus and also it pertains to the right of bodily autonomy for women now it is let's say like you know choice like the supreme court of india was taking a decision with, uh, related to choice versus the right of the fetus and all okay this is the thing so finally the supreme court of india has denied the like you know permission for going for abortion to this women now we have another article this article is also very important it says ai and the issue of human centricity in copyright law 
now this article is about artificial intelligence and like you know the issues related to whether the let's say like you know outputs that we receive from artificial intelligence can they be copyrighted so in this article they have discussed about let's say some case laws some case laws that involve the united states of america and also that involves india okay so we are going to compare how copyright related to ai related works is treated in india and in usa it says ai and the issue of human centricity in the copyright law ai and the issue of human centricity human centricity in copyright law in copyright law so let's discuss about this topic in detail so before we go into the details of the cases that are mentioned in, the, in this article we need to understand about one important thing which is copyright okay copyright so what are copyrights copyrights are a part of intellectual property rights okay copyrights are a part of intellectual property rights and when we talk about intellectual property rights okay these are in short known as ipr okay these are known as ipr intellectual property rights in case of india copyright like you know is voluntary in nature for example i have done a artistic work if i wish i can get it registered if i wish i may not get it registered but since i have made that artistic work i by default i receive a copyright on it okay so copyright is voluntary in nature and in india where do we go to get let's say like you know copyrighted thing so we have let's say like you know copyright uh, there are offices in india these are let's say copyright offices these are done under like an organization in india this is known as like you know this uh, some india patent office is there okay so this is uh, this is really this particular case is related to protection of intellectual property rights so we are going to talk about that organization as well so this is the copyrighted thing so the thing is copyright has been in news related to many things so let's discuss about a us case right a case law that was talked about in the united states of america so in the united states of america uh, this particular thing was discussed in a united states district court for the district of columbia in stephens thaler versus shira a perlumotor okay so like it it was in district of columbia where district of columbia in the united states so in that particular district court this particular thing has been examined just a minute all right so we are talking about a case law that is related to district of columbia so what has happened in this particular case we need to understand that uh, factor so the thing is there was a person there was a person who has let's say made a system he has made a ai system and from, from using that ai system this person has got an artistic work created okay an artistic work created this artistic work was related to a painting and then he applied for copyright on this okay then he applied for copyright on this in the district of columbia but the copyright application that he has made right in this copyright application he has clearly mentioned that he made this particular application and the thing is the work that was done was done solely by this artificial intelligent machines okay so it pertains to the work that was done by artificial intelligence but in in that particular case the court right court has denied the court has denied what the court has denied uh, this ai let's say protection the court has denied copyright protection to this particular person copyright protection right to this person this has happened in the united states of america so while giving the judgment what the judges has looked into 
judges has said that this should have some sort of human like you know human creativity so they have focused on what human creativity human creativity means if a piece of work is done by human themselves if it involves human creativity only then it is copyrightable only then it can get copyright if it is done solely by artificial intelligence that will not be given copyright okay so human creativity has been given importance in this case okay it has been given importance in this case however if you talk about india right so before we go into india let us understand about name of these uh, this particular case law okay what is the name so it is thalar versus shira a permuter okay it is thala t h a thala versus h i r a thala versus shira permuter p e r l m u t t e r okay thala versus shira permuter so this is the case law okay this is the case law in the usa so here they have emphasized that human creativity will be given copyright not the creativity by the machines and in case of india what in case of india there was a, an application it is known as suryast okay so here in indian registered a work of art called suryast for which ai okay so there was a art work now let us discuss about case of india in case of india there was a art work which is known as suryast okay this is the name of the what art work for which a person has sought copyright this artwork was created by a machine what was the name of the machine it is known as raghav artificial intelligence painting app okay name of the machine was raghav artificial intelligence painting app okay artificial intelligence painting app raghav artificial intelligence painting app okay so this is the name of the application right this is the name of the application using this application a person has made a painting made an artistic work its name is suryast and he has let's say applied for copyright in in copyright office and in that copyright this person has said that like you know although the artistic work was done by artificial intelligence but it has human presence also so this he said that uh, that person has what co-authored co-authored the work co-authored the work with the ai system and the thing is in case of india they have got a copyright okay they have got a copyright i mean like you know registered so they have got the copyright registered in india so when we talk about the usa usa court has totally looked into human creativity aspect they have you know discussed about human creativity but in case of india they they might have ignored or maybe that like you know they have uh, uh, the applicant has mentioned that he has co-authored this particular work right along with this raghav artificial intelligence painting app so that's why he has got a patent there was another patent case when uh, let's say like you know a painting was made but there uh, the person has said that he has developed the application he has developed the ai system but the thing is like the work artistic work was done solely by the ai system so in that case the copyright office in india they did not allow any patent in that case like they did not allow any copyright in that case okay so here this these two examples showcases how copyright how it means ai related work is copyrighted in india we do have laws also that law i mean related to copyright was made in 19 uh, like you know it, it is long like 1957 so we do have the copyright act of 1957 and we have copyright uh, office in india the copyright offices may have ignored this particular thing okay so apart from this there was a parliamentary standing committee also so we are going to talk about these parliamentary standing committee reports also so one of the thing is that is important we need to understand this copyright what this copyright act of 1957 
okay copyright act of 1957 and since at that point of time artificial intelligence was not known very less known so that's why this act does not include okay it does not include what artificial intelligence related aspects right so that's why the copyright of ai thing is not mentioned okay copyright of artificial intelligence is of work that is done by artificial intelligence is not mentioned in this case this is important for us to understand apart from this like you know there was a parliamentary standing committee report and its report is titled review of the intellectual property rights regime in india right it is parliamentary these are important things that i am writing those people who are attending the class it is expected that they also write along with me and it will become your notes for current affairs and this will help you to let's say like you know improve your answers if you are writing an answer related to any topic okay so there was a parliamentary standing committee report standing committee report parliamentary standing committee report what is the name of this report name of this report is review of the intellectual property rights regime in india review of the intellectual property rights regime in india right so this is this is the report it was let's say tabled in july 2021 so according to this report i mean like it may be useful to review the current scenario okay so they have made a recommendation in this particular uh, review report and the report also suggested reviewing the copyright act of 1970 and the patent act of 1970 uh, uh, 1957 of copyright act and the patent act of 1970 to incorporate the emerging technologies of ai and ai related inventions in india now we need to understand that like whenever we are talking about copyright copyright is not as rigorous as uh, maybe patents okay in case of patent we give the patent to in to inventions that are noble in case of copyright we give let's say copyright registration to human creativity okay this is the thing so this is a very i mean like you know emerging issue because it involves artificial intelligence and there are issues where like many huge number of authors who are writing books their books may be trained right means their books may be used to train artificial intelligence but once artificial intelligence gets trained what will happen to those books who are writers uh, those writers who are let's say like you know who have written books because these people are not go going to get any kind of benefit right this is the thing so this article is very important from gs paper 3 point of view then we have another topic it says reconciliation and retribution okay reconciliation and retribution there are let's say like you know differences in meaning of this these two words and this is related to international relations this is an ir related topic in this article the author has discussed about the current scenario that is happening in right gaza strip so in gaza strip i mean like israel has uh, launched a retaliation uh, activity after the hamas attack that has happened on october 7 so what israel is doing israel has let's say encroached upon the territory of gaza it is doing military exercise the israeli defense forces are let's say not only killing the hamas people but they are also involved in killing of huge number of civilians okay more than 8500 civilians have been killed in this article they look into the let's say like you know those human mind human nature related aspects so one of the thing in this article they have talked about what do we mean by revenge right what do we mean by revenge so there was a uh, let's say like there was a uh, kind of like you know essay that was written by a person his name is francis bacon okay francis bacon and in that essay that person has said that revenge is a kind of wild it is a wild justice okay it is a kind of wild justice 
and this while justice may let's say follow up after a kind of provocation after a kind of provocation so if a person is provoked then he may go for taking revenge and it's a kind of wild justice for only that person who is taking revenge but the thing is like there is another aspect of human behavior that aspect is a kind of let's say uh, like seeking some kind of reconciliation okay seeking reconciliation we are going to discuss about this reconciliation and also we are going to discuss about another uh, about another term that term is really really important that term says that this revenge is there but the thing is like human being has a capacity of let's say thinking before taking any action so those people who fail in thinking those people who fail in let's say uh, like you know doing introspection right so they may tend to go for revenge but if we introspect right if we introspect we will be able to understand what are the causes that are leading to a kind of revenge phase for us and if we do introspection we will be able to have some kind of like you know some kind of deterrence in our behavior deterrence in the sense deterrence not for the other person but we will ourselves stop right before going for any kind of wild revenge but if we take out that particular term from human but we take away restraint okay this is known as restraint now let's consider i am provoked after provocation i do have multiple options one of the option is let's say i may introspect that what has led to provocation right after introspection if i have the capacity of restraining so the thing is i will not go for wild justice what i will not go for any kind of wild justice i mean like i will not go for revenge i may let's say think back i may restrain myself and the thing is like i may later on go for reconciliation means like you know to make peace that uh, with that person so this was the ideology that has let's say like you know that has uh, like for which like we have mr gandhi right mohandas karamchand gandhi as the as one of the most famous example right why because he not only thought about let's say making peace but he was a person who was let's say a practicing non um, non violence uh, pr uh, person like he was a person who practiced non violence right he was he practiced non violence but the thing is in today's scenario there will be many people who may think of that like you know it to be a fiction but it has not been a fiction there was a case when mohandas karamchand gandhi mahatma gandhi like he was he returned to south africa after he returned to south africa like some policemen has right in south africa they have let's say misbehaved with mahatma gandhi they have used let's say like you know force against mahatma gandhi but the thing is like he was saved by wife of a police officer and she said to mahatma gandhi do one thing uh, like you know go and report against this uh, these people who have let's say tortured you or who have let's say uh, like you know misbehave with you what mahatma gandhi said that if i do so so it will create a vicious cycle of this particular thing these people have a sense these people have a sense that like you know i have done something wrong to them so the thing is it is going to perpetrate uh, perpetrate this particular thing for a long time so in this article the author has talked about this particular thing which is reconciliation why reconciliation is important so that we can bring peace and peace is very important for the entire world it's going to save the lives thousands of lives who are being killed at this point of time in gaza but what happens many a times i mean like you know the statesmen the authorities right they go for retribution they go for what retribution retribution means they go for let's say taking revenge revenge in an authoritative manner by taking let's say like you know law and order in their hand by let's say using the mechanism law enforcement mechanism the police forces defense forces but this article says that nations that cross the boundaries of civilized behavior can only give lasting wounds not lasting solutions okay those nations that cross the boundaries of civilized behavior can only give lasting wounds not not lasting solutions 
this is a very very important topic this topic is important for your essay paper and this is also important for your ethics paper essay and ethics this is a really important topic it talks about human behavior it talks about let's say human behavior of introspection it talks about human behavior of restraint it talks about human behavior of going for reconciliation or going for retribution maybe like you know for going for revenge these are the things okay so if you read this article you will understand a bit related to this topic so with this we are now going to talk about another important issue this article says understanding the us israel relations okay at this point of time i mean like you know hamas versus israel i mean like you know Hamas has conducted an attack on Israel. Okay, they have conducted an attack. And what Israel is doing? Israel is retaliating. Okay, it is retaliating. Not only it is retaliating, this retaliation is brutal. It is lead to killing of civilians. It is lead to killing of children. It is lead to, let's say, bombing of hospitals. Right? And recently it was in news that they have also bombed a refugee camp. Okay, what they have done? They have bombed a refugee camp also. So these are the things, this retaliation that Israel is doing. Like Israel is being condemned by huge number of countries across the world for their behavior of retaliation. This retaliation is, right? This retaliation is not proportional. Okay, it is not proportional why it is not proportional means like the initial harm that were inflicted on israelis this retaliation outweighs overweights that harm by many times okay so that's why i mean like you know we need to understand those countries that are supporting israel so one of the country that supports israel is united states of america of course right united states of america so the thing is, if we talk about relation between USA and Israel, the relation is not new. They have had their relationship uh, ship like, you know, even before India, uh, like, you know, even before, let's say, like, you know, the, the system of United Nations organization was created. So the thing is, their ties date back the UN system as well. In 1948, the moment when Israel declared itself as a nation, America was the first country, it was the first country to recognize you, uh, Israel as a independent nation. It was the first country. Within 11 minutes of the declaration by Israel, America has recognized their existence. America has said that yes, this is a country, right? This is a country and we recognize it, okay? So the thing is, the US has voted, uh, what US has done, all the resolutions that have been moved in the United Nations Security Council so far against Israel. All those resolutions have been vetoed by the vetoed by the United States of America. Even recently in the United Nations General Assembly, a resolution was passed. In that resolution, they sought a kind of ceasefire. Most of the countries was in support of the ceasefire, but United States of America, UK, they were against it okay so they have voted against this particular thing okay so the thing is we can see the kind of support that israel receives from usa right so th this article says this particular thing and in 1922 and 1944 us congress passed resolution endorsing the belfort declaration what is belfort declaration belfort belfort i mean like you know uh, so rutherford belfort i think so he was a person who was a secretary of state like he was a foreign secretary of uk mr belfort was foreign secretary of uk and he has declared that they would provide an independent or uh, uh, let's say like a national home for the jewish people in palestine and that belfort declaration was made in 1917 and so that period was known as mandate period from 1917 to 1948 it was a mandate period during which the UK, I mean like, you know, United Kingdom has done its best to make it sure that Israelis or like, you know, people uh, like Jewish people get their homeland. 
right in palestine so that was later named as israel and the moment israel has declared itself as a nation right within 11 minutes the united states of america has recognized their statehood so they have recognized and in international relations the recognition of other countries plays very very important role and it says us offers practically unconditional financial military and political support for israel which has been occupying Palestine, uh, Palestinian territory since 1967, right? But the thing is, has, been, has this relationship been this way so far? Largely, US has been supportive of Israel. Most of the people who reside, let's say most Jewish people who reside in USA also, they support America by providing funding for their elections, no matter if our president is coming from the Republican Party or he is coming from the Democratic, uh, Democrat Party, for all parties they give, let's say, funding equally. So they have some kind of influence in the, in the foreign policy related to Israel in USA. And Israel has received so much support from the United States of America in this regard. Okay? So in this article they have said, was there any ab or like, you know, low in the face of ties between these two countries. Here there have been many uh, phases of low and high in their relationship but as of now the USA is one of the strongest supporter of Israel. Okay, that's the thing. You can go through this article to understand this. In this article they have talked about Sioux war okay, uh, that was related to Sioux canal. So Sioux canal I mean like I have discussed earlier also in a mapping topic. Okay, Sioux canal is, is a kind of waterway. So this canal looks like this. I mean, like it's 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 a waterway. It gives a passage, right? Passage to a kind of sea, so that like you know, maritime trade happens through it. In that Suez war, also Israel was supported by United States of America. Then we have another topic. This topic says virtues of planning, virtues of planning. So what Niti Aayog is doing? Okay, Niti Ayog. So Niti Ayog is coming up with a document which is which is known, known as Vision 2047. Vision 2047. Why 2047 is an important year? Because 2047 will ma mark 100th anniversary. Okay, it will mark 100th anniversary. of India's independence, okay, 100th anniversary of India's independence. So the thing is, India has become independent on 15th of August 1947. So on 15th of August 2047, we will have 100 years of it. We have already, let's say, crossed 75 years of independence, right? Now, where do we want to see our India by 2047? So the Prime Minister Narendra Modi views India as a developed country, okay. So he views India as a developed country by 2047. So we want to be a developed country, right. India wants to be a developed country by 2047. And if we want to be a developed nation, we need to grow our economy the way that we have never done. We need to, let's say, pace. Uh, increase the pace of economic growth and we want to see our country to be a 30 trillion dollar economy okay we want to see our, our country as 30 trillion dollar economy that's the thing so in this article they have talked about like you know what are the virtues of planning virtues of planning means if you are planning so you need to be forward looking you need to see right you need to see the future you need to carve out path so that like you know you can move towards achieving that phase of development okay so you can go through this article in free time then we have another topic it says bangladesh nominee um, bangladesh nominee defeats nepal in race for who regional post okay so here we are talking about a post in the world health organization regional office regional office related to southeast asia region okay who regional office director okay regional office director of southeast asia region okay southeast 
एशिया रीजन राइट सो दिस इज द थिंग नाउ देर वर टू कंट्रीज दैट वर लेट्स से लाइक यू नो वोटिंग लाइक दैट वर कंटेस्टिंग द थिंग वन ऑफ द कंट्री इज नेपाल एंड अनदर कंट्री इज बांग्लादेश ओके अनदर कंट्री इज बांग्लादेश so so these two countries were contesting with one another the nominee from bangladesh is the daughter of the let's say like you know prime minister of bangladesh okay uh, her name is saima wazid she is the daughter of sheikh hasina so she has been elected right she has been elected as the director of the regional uh, uh, regional office of southeast asia region for world health organization and so there was a voting that has happened and in that voting uh, like out of 11 countries 10 countries participated i mean like you know these countries are india bangladesh bhutan north korea indonesia maldives nepal sri lanka thailand and timor leste so 10 of these countries participate uh, let's say like you know participated in this voting like this i mean like 11th country which is myanmar they did not send a delegation to delhi meeting this is the thing and uh, so if we talk about india like which country did it support it support uh, obviously bangladesh because india has deeper ties with bangladesh as compared to uh, nepal although like india maintains very good relation with both the members but like you know when the uh, i mean like you know when the government looked into multiple factors so they have decided to support the bangladeshi part of it okay bangladesh uh, like candidate for this post here we have another article this article says politicians tech leaders gather for uk's ai summit so the united kingdom united kingdom i mean like here now uh, uk president is rishi sunak right so they are conducting a ai summit artificial intelligence summit so why this summit is important through this summit basically they want to discuss about how to regulate artificial intelligence worldwide how to regulate artificial intelligence in uk and also worldwide and why regulation of artificial intelligence is important because artificial intelligence has emerged to be one of the technology that has the potential of shaping the human future in unprecedented way it can shape the human future in a positive direction so that like you know the economies people may get empowered they may let's say generate more profit for them and at the same time it does have the potential of harming human beings the civilization the society in an unprecedented way and the harm that it can cause it can cause huge amount of harm so the thing is we want a future that is let's say ai ready and at the same time we want the ai artificial intelligence to be regulated in such a manner that like we can outweigh the positive thing uh, like you know the we can let's say like we can have more positive output as compared to the negativity associated with artificial intelligence so this is the thing so resulted in this black so they have in this article they have mentioned about many things but the thing is like what is important for us that they are trying to build a global framework okay they are trying to build a global framework for ai regulation okay they are building a global framework for ai regulation this is the thing okay so that's why they are having a what uh this like you know a summit for regulation of artificial intelligence now we have another topic this topic is equally very very important it says upsc tightens rules for appointment of state police chiefs okay now let us understand that like you know in india we have a central government and we have various state governments we have union territories also but union territories are administered by the center okay they are administered by the center barring the states of delhi and puducherry in delhi and puducherry they have let's say legislative assemblies and they have a election system where let's say i mean like you know uh, like there are state governments also in delhi and puducherry but when we talk about other states in india in all those states there is a state police chief a state police chief means director general of police dgp we generally say him to be dgp so he is the chief of the police in states okay he is the chief of police in states in india 
so every state has one dgp the thing is but what has what happens in many of these states right the state government selects those people as dgp who have a remaining tenure of 2 to 3 months only right those people who have a re remaining tenure of 2 3 months only so that these people cannot do much changes to the i mean like you know to the structure of law and order right and then they will be appoint some other person but recently the union public service commission has come up with some regulation it it has come come up with some regulation and according to it they said that at least these police chiefs should have a 6 months tenure in that particular post right and if in case they want a person to be let's say deputed from the central government to the state government if they want some deputation in that case they can write a letter to the ministry of home affairs right mha they can seek let's say like you know permission from the mha to depute that person from the uh, like you know center to the state but if mha denies then they have to restart the process of asking for let's say permission from the ministry of home affairs to appoint someone else this is the thing so in this article they have talked about many states also they have mentioned about the state of uttar pradesh punjab andhra pradesh telangana they have all appointed in charge dgps or dgps with full additional charge means the thing is like many states what they do instead of appointing a dgp they appoint a person let's say like who is acting dgp acting dgp means he does not have the actual post of dgp but like you know by the time an actual dgp is appointed so that person acts as acting dgp and like you know the state government gets most of the work done through the acting dgp this is the thing so in this article they have talked about how various state governments bypass the process which is in place okay which is in place so this is the thing you can go through this article in your free time to understand little more on this this is another article this article is very very important it says elusive le uh, like leopard dies of gunshot wounds okay so we understand that leopards are big cats they are very important for the ecology because they are top level pre predators they maintain the ecological balance okay in an ecology we should have the producers which are plants we should have consumers maybe goat horse etc we should have carnivores also who eat upon the consumers primary consumers then we have top level carnivores also carnivores like you know the leopards tigers lions etc then above them like you know we have vultures also in case these leopards tigers they die so these vultures will be eating out them okay so this makes a balance right of the uh, like ecology right this is known as like ecological food web okay so there should be a chain of dependency so recently what has happened a particular leopard so it has been wandering in the eecs layout in bangalore so it like you know it has it has been roaming around and one of the forest uh, like you know forest official forest uh, department personnel he has shot this leopard and because of this shot i mean like you know this leopard has died okay so this is the thing and so the chief conservation uh, conservator of forest uh, has said this particular thing that this leopard has died of the gunshot wounds okay so this is a sad moment this is a tragic uh, tragic moment because uh, i mean like you know these leopards are very less in number we have the highest level of protection for them and these forest officials who are considered to be the protectors of animals they should have all the sort of restraint for them so that like you know their actions do not lead to killing of animals like this i mean like they are in charge of safeguarding these animals they are not there to kill the animals okay so there should be an independent and impartial inquiry in this case and if the person is found guilty he should be let's say punished as well this is the thing okay although these things are not mentioned over here in this article but like you can go through it in your free time then we have another topic very short topic it says kerala village bets big on mushroom coffee brand now this is a very very important article in this article they have discussed about a coffee brand okay means like we almost like many of us are consumers of coffee 
coffee have some kind of let's say like you know uh, like particles in it that let's say like you know activates our brain system if we if we are feeling sleepy so like we consume tea or coffee so this activates our brain and like you know we tend to start walking but this particular brand of coffee right in this brand of coffee what they have done so as part of coffee i mean like you know out of 100% 70% of it will be coffee and 30% of it right 30% of it will be mushroom okay 30% of it will be mushroom so what is the importance of mushroom i mean like it is going to help the human health okay because if we talk about uh, while lion's mane is a cognitive enhancer sun dried oyster mushroom contains a lot of vitamin d and turkey tail is good for bone health so they say like if we consume this coffee it's going to enhance our health because it does have it will be having let's say like vitamin d as well okay and it will it will be good for bone health okay so this is the thing so this coffee brand right it has become popular in the state of kerala and it wants to spread its let's say like you know presence throughout india so this is a good i would say like you know starter because coffee anyhow act as antioxidants okay so they act as antioxidants this is the thing so that's all from my side for the day thank you so much everyone for watching today's video i hope you have a good day ahead thank you